Welcome to my art and fiction channel. I'm Adele and this week I'm going to be sharing with you a very short story called Patient Rewards. Now I've got to warn you, in this little story there's a tiny bit of language that some people might object to. If you're one of those people, just scroll on by, end of problem, okay? On to the story. Patient Rewards. I can see the garden from my kitchen window. It's relaxing to look out while I'm busy peeling potatoes or washing up. I like seeing what birds are bobbing about and the roses always make me smile. The view from the front window isn't so good. Just the car park, bus shelter and passing traffic. And I don't care for watching who's out and about. A pack of busybodies, a lot of them. That's the trouble with living in a small town. They all think they know your business. I had enough of gossip after my husband upped and left me for that bloody hairdresser. All boobs and lipstick, that one. Wanted a divorce, he did. Good riddance to bad rubbish, I said. And I never bothered again after that. Marriage isn't all it's cracked up to be. Being a domestic servant who gets squashed and sweated over every Friday night. Sod that. So off he went and I was left on my own in this flat. I like it now. I've nobody to answer to so long as I keep paying the rent. And the gossip after he shacked up with that floozy died away decades ago. I'm seen as poor old Dillis. Dignified and forgiving. Well, if someone's talking about leaving, their heart's already out of the door. So I let him go. And what's the point of running feuds in a small place like this? That just gives people even more to yammer about. So I was always polite to him and her in the street, always ready with a smile and a cheery, Good morning! And people said how good I was, how kind and understanding, more so than they'd be themselves, if their husband had dis dis deserted them for a tart. Oh yes! I kept it all pleasant in public. Not one soul knew how I really felt. Cast aside, I'd been. Rejected in favour of a newer toy. No children for me. I'd been put back on the shelf and left to watch from the sidelines as they set up home in one of those fancy new bills springing up round the edges of our old town. New faces, new accents and every passing year I see fewer familiar faces coming and going from these flats where I've lived all my adult life. There's talk of them being demolished. We'll all be rehoused. But where? It's handy for the shops here and the doctor's just around the corner. Things like that matter when a person's retirement date was two decades ago or more. She got fed up of my husband in time. Wanted someone with more money, I expect. True to type. She turned him out and he tried worming his way back to me. Wanted someone to cook for him and do his laundry. Well, I'd learned to enjoy my own space by then. I'd made a pleasant life for myself, so I sent him packing. He died not long after. Stupid, really, the way he went. But he didn't look after himself. She couldn't stand having his urn in the house. I suppose it cramped her style. It must be tricky having your dead husband sat in a pot when you're whining and dining prospective replacements. She offered the ashes to me, seeing as she thought we were friends. So, there he was, a pot of grey ashes sitting on my bureau. I used to shout at his ashes, called him every damn word I knew and gave his pot a good shake-up. Who's back on the shelf now, hey? He annoyed me just by being in my lovely home and him with no right to it. There's not a thing in my home which wasn't paid for with my own hard-earned, honest money. Then one afternoon, I was looking out of this kitchen window just as I am now and there was a small team from the Housing Association tidying up the communal garden and spreading muck around the roses. Well, they like a bit of shit, do roses, so I decided they could have some more. And so, after the workers left, that's where his ashes went. 
Mrs. Smarty Pants eventually came a cropper. Her new money bags ditched her for a younger model. Had a taste of her own medicine. Serves her right. Then she got sick and pegged it anyway. Not many came to a funeral. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. With me having been so nice to her all these years, I was asked if I knew what should happen to her ashes. I'll be glad to take care of her, I said with a dutiful smile. I carried her ashes home to my flat and tipped her down the rubbish oot with the rest of the trash. <laughs> if you enjoyed that little story, let me know. Leave a comment and click on the subscribe button in the corner down there. And I'll see you all again next week. Okay, bye.